Shabbat Shalom. Good morning. If you uh, want to follow along, um, I'm going to be reading this morning from Psalm 27. I um, want to say good morning to anybody who might be here for the first time. We always, uh, at least I've always been instructed since I started this thing, to read a psalm, a.k.a. Um, Israel's hymnal. Um, and if you're uh, watching from, uh, I know we have, right now we have uh, actually, um, every, every state is, um, is tuning in. At least there's a group from every state across the United States tuning in with us. <laughs> Which for a, a prophetic movement like Messianic Judaism, that's like a, um, it's something. God has definitely has uh, accomplished some, some things here, without a doubt. Um, my prayer is that, uh, first and foremost, as always, the Lord would be blessed. That's my primary objective. Uh, that's the primary objective of uh, why I do what I do, to bless and glorify God. Uh, secondarily, um, it would be great if, if you would be blessed as well. And if I know God the way I know God, it's never a one-way street. It's always mutually beneficial. So uh, as long as we bless him, um, you'll be blessed as well. And my prayer for myself is that God would use me as a ventriloquist dummy. Um, as long as I preach the word unadulterated in spirit and truth, I'm sure God will open up his window from his storehouse and rain down his spirit. So I'm absolutely expecting. In fact, the word I got today from the Lord was, Heaven and earth will meet today at Beth Yeshua. So I'm, I'm, I'm believing what I heard. It's just that simple. Totally believing it. Um, this psalm uh, is a very familiar psalm to a lot of people. It's quoted a lot, and it's even on bumper stickers and things like this. But I want to start reading it. It says, Adonai is my light and my salvation, whom do I need to fear? Adonai is the stronghold of my life, of whom should I be afraid? So obviously, David is, is saying that when there's darkness, God will bring forth light. When uh, in the midst of his enemies, he'll get deliverance. And um, in the midst of the storm, God will be a refuge. Um, but with that being said, I wanna, I wanna share something with you. You know, um, Today, today, especially in America, not so much when I travel to places like Southeast Asia or the bowels of Africa, but in America today, um, the faith started to wane, to be perfectly honest with you, by the third century. By the third century, uh, when Peter wrote his letters, he was already warning, um, Peter was warning people in his letters. You might not know why he wrote the letters, but if you read the letters, you'll see why. Uh, the second letter is only 61 verses. It's not like, a, you know, we, it's that long. And, and all these letters are directed to certain people, but it was directed to the body of Messiah, and he was saying, be on the lookout because false teachers are on the horizon, and they're going to bring their heresies. And their heresies are always to really get us to sin comfortably. Uh, that's really what it's about. That's what false teachers preach. Um, they preach mainly the grace of God, uh, they don't speak the truth of God. And um, by Jude's letter, by Jude's epistle, not only were they on the horizon, but they had already infiltrated the church. And the church was falling apart by the first century. By the third century, when Constantine took over, it was done. It didn't revive till the 18th century. It did not. The dark ages were dark because God was history. And man had brought in so much illegitimate religion into the faith. It was only till the first great awakening and then the second great awakening that happened in England and then it infiltrated into America. But I could tell you, that awakening is history. <laughs> you know, you might say, Rabbi, you're not talking to me. I'm not talking to you unless I'm talking to you. I'm telling you that the body of Messiah in America is absolutely positively lukewarm, without a doubt. Holiness is not spoken about. Sin is not spoken about. 
the second coming is not spoken about. What they speak is they tell you how you can use this to improve your life. Even the, even the guys that look on fire for God, they're telling you how to apply God's word. Even to make you a better believer, it's still how to apply the word. That is not why God wrote this. God wrote this to tell you who he is and who he expects you to be. And I can tell you, I hear this all the time. I heard it yesterday three times. Hey, God knows I'm only human. He understands Does he? I think you're taking liberties. Because I could see Job saying, God understands. I'm just human. And (laughs) when God came down, he said, Job, get ready. I'm coming down. Brace yourself. And if I can paraphrase, give you the Greg Hirschberg version from Job 38 to 40, even into 41. He said, who do you think you are? And he was the most righteous guy in the world. <laughs> he's not talking to some Luke. He's talking to the most righteous guy in the world. He said, I'm sorry. Did we forget? You ever say that to your kids? Did you ever say that to your kid? Kind of like, I'm sorry. Seriously. I'm sorry, son. Who am I? I've only had to say that once to them. <laughs> but I've said it because... Who am I? You know, when it says honor your parents, it means to worship them. Chabad means worship. Not worship like an idol, but to worship them. And if they can't worship you, I guarantee they can't worship God because the Bible says if they don't worship what they do see, they absolutely cannot, not will not, cannot worship what they don't see. So here I am, a frail human, one who falls short of the glory, trying my best to be holy, but still sin. And I'm telling my kid, I'm sorry, do we forget who I am? You don't think God has a right to say to you, I'm sorry. And listen to me. Some of you have forgotten. You've gotten comfortable. You have. It happens to the best of us. I hope today that the word of God disturbs your comfort. And if you are absolutely walking close to God, I hope the word of God comforts you. Because that's what the Word of God does. It disturbs the comfortable and it comforts the disturbed. And it's amazing because it's right out of the mouth of God. Nothing's like it. Nothing at all. It pulsates. It's alive. It's powerful. You know how, ma- you know how many people have been changed by the Word of God? Do you know how many great theologians that we know about in the past were changed, secular people, just from reading the Word of God? When you read this, you should see the words shaking. I'm I'm not kidding you. I see them shaking. When I read this, I'm just telling you, they shake. They move. I think something's wrong with my eye like I have a twitch, but the word is shaking, and it's pulsating. There's like a, a, a flow, some kind of spiritual blood flow, some life force, and I see sometimes that rise, and boom! Sometimes it'll hit me right in the chest, right in the heart. Boom! These are not words on the page, guys. This is the, this is the power-packed voice of God on a page. It is living, breathing. Now, I'm going to read this psalm, and this is not what I want you to think about, even though David penned it through, of course, the influence of the Holy Spirit. I believe this expresses Yeshua's innermost thoughts prior to the cross. I'm going to read it. Think about that. And if it doesn't to you, toss it. No problem. Can you see him saying right before he's ready to go to the cross, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, Adonai is my light and my salvation. Whom do I need to fear? Adonai is the stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? Now check this out. I shared this with a pastor 46 years just this morning. He goes, this is astounding to me. I told him, read verse 2. What do you think of? When evildoers assailed me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they stumbled and fell. No? John 18. The temple guard and the Roman detachment came after him. 
with clubs and swords and lanterns. And he said, who are you looking for? And they said, Yeshua of Nazareth. And he said, I am. And they stumbled and fell. Today, thank God, it's, it's, it's waned. Ten years ago, we had all the CDs. And I'm not talking about a compact disc. I'm talking about courtesy drops. You know, where people lay hands on you and they fall as long as there's three guys going to catch you. Nobody was catching them. When you fall under the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going down. And guess what? When you come up, you'll never be the same. Listen to what Yeshua is saying. If an army encamps around me, my heart will not fear. If war breaks out against me, even then I will keep trusting. Who could say this but him? Just one thing. Can you imagine him saying? Just one thing I've asked of the Lord. Only this will I seek. To live in the house of Anoah. He just wanted to get back. Let me finish the mission so I can get back to my daddy. To live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. What does he want from his father? To see the beauty of his face. What do we want? Stuff. And visit in his temple, his throne room. For he will conceal me in his shelter on the day of my trouble. He will hide me in the folds of his tent. He will set me high in a rock. Then my head will be lifted up around my surrounding foes, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing praises to Adonai. Listen to my voice when I cry, Adonai. Answer me. My heart said of you, seek my face. Your face I will seek. Do not hide your face from me, remember? Why have you forsaken me? Don't turn your servant away in anger. You are my help. Don't abandon me. Same word as forsaken in the Hebrew. Had my father and mother had left me, I don't know, you'll care for me. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Don't give me up to the whims of my foes. For false witnesses have risen against me. Also those who are breathing violence. If I hadn't believed that I would see Adonai's goodness in the land, he was convinced. And now, the last verse to me would be Yeshua giving us a little personal advice from heaven based on his own experience. Put your hope in Adonai. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. <laughs> Put your hope in the Lord. You know what he's saying? Stick with God. Don't quit. Don't quit. You have come way too far at this point. Some of you have been through so much. I know what it's like to want to give up. I know what it's like to be tired. I know what it's like to say, no mas, I can't swing anymore, God. That's the best time for you being so weak that God will make himself strong. If you're strong, you don't need him. And if you're not weak, you can't fake it. God knows. So sometimes when you see people going through horrific scenarios, even though you're broken, on the spiritual level, you are beautifully broken. Because that's when God comes in, the most powerful, the most beautiful. That's when he is strong. That's when he says to Moses, don't worry about it, Moses. Tell the people to relax. They'll see the salvation of the Lord. So when people say to me, when I'm going through a rabbi fight, you know what I say? The Lord is a warrior. He's the master of war. I'm just going to watch him fight. He don't need to boast in heaven about my fighting ability. I need to boast on earth about his. You hear me? He don't need to boast about my... He don't need to sit with the living creature and say, Hey, I want to tell you about Greg Hirschberg. I'm going to tell you today about my God. And not just at Beth Yeshua. Because I tell him about God at Fresh Market, at Walmart, and every other place I go. Because I am... I, if Yeshua was willing to die for me in public, I'm not going to live for him in private.
Let them say what they will. They don't like you anyway. What's the difference? <laughs> Heavenly Father, what a, what, a, what a great day. What a great day already. The understatement of all understatements, Father, is you're good. I don't know what to say anymore. So I hope you see our heart. And I hope you see that it's all for you. Help us to love you more because you deserve it. And I hope, I hope, I hope you're happy today with our worship. As always, we come to you in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Shabbat shalom, guys.